Hello guys and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you seven of my favorite tools. These are ones that over the years I've kind of learned and they have been an absolute game changer. Some of them you might know about, some of them you might never have heard about, but there are going to be situations where you want to do certain things and there might be a tool that you didn't know Blender has. I'm going to cover seven of the tools that I think every Blender beginner should learn and it's going to make a big difference in your modeling and your 3D workflow in general. So let's jump into it and I'm going to show you my top seven. So the first tool we're going to be looking at is the knife tool. So let's grab our default cube. Let's tab into edit mode. And to get the knife tool, you simply just have to press K on your keyboard and that'll bring up the knife tool. And you can do several things with that. So for example, I'm going to cut out just a leaf pattern here. I'm just left clicking on the surface of the cube here and I'm just clicking around and let's go something like this. And then what you're going to do when you're done, you're just going to click back on the one that you started with. When that happens, all you have to do is press enter and it puts that into place. And now it'll automatically have that cutout selected and you can now extrude it or you can inset it by pressing I, you can extrude it again, you can bevel it. And this is a really kind of cool way of making insets and all sorts of little feature details. It's great for like cutting rocks or the ends of sharp surfaces to make cracks. And uh, there's all sorts of cool ways you could use this. I'll just quickly show you again. You press the K on your keyboard and you can just click and make shapes, bring it all together, press enter and then extrude it in, scale it. You can see here we've made like a little crevice. So super handy tool using the knife tool. The second tool we're gonna be looking at is the bevel tool. This is a super handy tool. Let's go to our edge select and just select a single edge. You can hit control B or command B. That is the shortcut key. And by moving your mouse, you can control the bevel. And if you roll the middle mouse button, you can control the amount of segments inside of there. But let's just quickly roll a few in like this and just make it about this big and then left click. When you do that, you're gonna see this is a little box down here. Before you exit out of this, you can come here and you can change the width. And over here, you can type in numbers or just pull the little slider. And you can also take the shape here. You can invert it or you can bring it all the way out or a little something in between. So this can be very handy for kind of like architectural stuff and um, things where you need to do bevels and insets. So it's kind of like an inset tool and a bevel tool. You can select the verts here. So it only does the vertices on the ends, whereas in here it just does the edges. So verts, the individual vertexes and the edges. And what you can do as well, let's just go to our vertex select option. If you were to select a single vertex, you can go control shift B and that'll allow you to bevel a vertex and you can also roll the middle mouse button like so. So this is a super handy tool. And by the way, if you go over here, you also get the bevel tool if you don't wanna use the shortcut. So that is the bevel tool. I've now switched out to a UV sphere. And the next tool we're gonna to be looking at is proportional editing. So before I show you what it is, I'll show you what a situation might be. Let's say for example, I wanted to just grab a vertex here and I wanted to move it. And then I wanted to move the verts around it. So I selected them as well and I moved them out a little bit. I'd have to spend a whole day here if I just wanted to bring them all out to a certain point to maybe make a nose or a little hill or something over here. But what I can do is I can undo all of that and I can go over here, enable proportional editing. And now when we select a vertex and we press G to move it, we now have this fall off and it's affecting the verts around it. We can roll our middle mouse button in or out to control the fall off while we move our mouse. Now here's a situation for you. Let's select by pressing A all of this sphere, shift D to duplicate, move another piece here. What if we wanted to now select a vertex over here and then move it, but we only wanted it to affect this mesh over here, not this mesh. You can now come to the drop down and go to connected only. And now it'll only move pieces of mesh that a vertex is connected to. So in this case, I can select this without moving it. And that's gonna be handy for all sorts of reasons when you get into more advanced modeling. You can also change the fall off curve so you can have something that's a little bit sharper with its influence, whereas in some of them are a little bit more rounded out. Really just depends on what you're doing. There's even an option for random. So if you select a single vertex, it'll have a random distribution on the verts around it, which is really cool, kind of adding like a noise to it. So that's been the proportional editing tool. So now I've got a default cube back and what we're gonna look at is the fourth tool I wanna mention and that is the loop tool. Yes, we can sometimes go ahead and just subdivide everything 
and that is all good but sometimes we don't want to add a new cut everywhere all over the surface we just want to add in a individual cut along a certain axis so the way we can do that is we can go ahead and press Control r or command r and when you hover over the certain the, the different faces here or the different edges you can see this yellow line and this yellow line is telling you where you can add it in now before you click to add it in you can also roll your middle mouse button That'll add in more segments and you can roll it down to remove the segments. So let's just leave one segment and then left click once and then again. And then we're going to have over here a loop options. We can come over here and increase the amount this way by typing it in if we want it to be more specific. We can also increase or decrease the smoothness, which can be really handy. We can also change the fall off method. We can make it more smoothed out, a little bit more sharp. Um, this can be really powerful when we're trying to make more complicated shapes. And it's actually really simple to use. So th this is the loop tool. Definitely something you should know about when you get into more advanced modeling. So the fifth tool we're gonna be looking at is the shear tool. There was actually a time where I really struggled with this specific one, where I wanted to make like a pipe bending. So I'll just go ahead and rotate the face, scale it up, and then I'd extrude it down on the Z, I'd flatten the face. And this was kind of like how I thought you could do something like this. But then I figured out by watching a Andrew Price video years later that there is actually a tool for this called the shear tool that will preserve the shape and the volume of a cylinder or any shape you're extruding. So what you can do is you can select a face on a cylinder and let's go into our front view and what we're going to do, we're going to type in F3 and over here in a search, I've already typed it in, but you're going to type in S-H-E-A-R, you're going to get the shear tool and now you can actually rotate this without losing the... Um, shape or the volume of the cylinder. So let's rotate it a little bit and left click. And then we're gonna come here to the shear options. And now you have a little window here where you can control this. And this is actually a really, really handy tool. And now that we have something rotated, at that point you can just go ahead and you can extrude it. And we haven't lost or deformed the cylinder in any way while doing that. So the shear tool is super powerful, especially when you're doing like um, architectural type stuff or there are just times you want to rotate something or shear it without having to cut it or mess around with scaling again. So for the next one, I've got a plane over here in edit mode. I'm just going to right click and subdivide it a few times. And this one is a selection tool. And this one is really something that helped me a lot when I learned about it. So say for example, I wanted to make like some sort of tiled wall, but I only wanted every other tile to be extruded or whatever, right? Then I'd have to come in here and hold and shift and just select every other one. But did you know there's actually a tool for this? You can go ahead, press A to select every face. And then what you can do is you can type in F3 and you can type in checker and you can go to checker deselect and it'll select it in a checker pattern. Now you can press something like I for example to inset those faces and then E to extrude. And now you have like this really cool way of doing like a checker pattern. This is really handy for architectural type stuff, for making kind of mosaics, all sorts of cool things. And you can use it in all sorts of things that have different faces on them. So checker, deselect, very handy tool. Definitely one you should know getting into some more advanced modeling. Uh, it's really a ton of cool stuff you can do to do with this. And I might even cover it in its own video one day. So that is the checker deselect. And for the seventh and last tool I'm going to be showing you guys today, we're going to go ahead and add in a circle. And let's just tab into edit mode. And what you can do is you can press F to fill the circle. But what if you wanted to fill it in different ways? What if you had a hole in a piece of mesh that you wanted to fill? So, so let's just for now go to our vertex select option. Let's go E to extrude, S to scale. And now we have just this kind of disc with a hole in it. And what we're gonna do with all of these verts and inside selected, we're gonna go Control F, and then we're gonna to go to this option here called Grid Fill. And now it's gonna fill it with a grid. But if you wanted to change a few things here, what you can do, you can come here to the Grid Fill options, and over here you got a span and an offset. So the span over here is gonna determine how it, the amount of topology you have over here. So if you kind of drag that number down, you're gonna have less. If you drag it up, you're gonna have more, but at a certain point, it just goes to less. So you only have so much you can drag it to or so little you can drag it to. And this is kind of 
really handy for determining the amount. Usually I kind of leave it at the default, but a thing you're usually gonna be looking at is gonna be the offset. And the offset allows you to kind of turn things. Sometimes you have to kind of bring it to more of an even number and then work with the offset if you want it to go a certain direction. It really just depends on how many initial verts you had in the hole that you were filling. So over here, I think we'd have something like 24 or 32 verts in the circle. So that would be an even number. So it's kind of cool filling it in here. But let's just say for example, I'm just gonna quickly delete these faces and then use the cut tool or the knife tool, just quickly to show you guys. And if I want to now go shift alt left click to select all of these verts and I go control F and I go grid fill, it doesn't wanna do it because we've got an uneven number of verts. In that case, you can go control F and then try one that's just called fill. Um, that one is a little bit more messy, it's more triangulated, but it can sometimes get the job done. What I usually just do is I make sure that I either get rid of an extra edge that's not needed, or add in a new one to make the amount of verts even. So that is the fill tool, and it's definitely gonna be something you use when you get into more advanced modeling. I hope you have enjoyed these seven tools in Blender. These are definitely ones that I have personally used, and they've been very handy to me over the years. And I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.